hello, 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 and welcome <laughs> to this, the final hello. boss fight pub quiz. With vegans. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I didn't have a background on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like most of your characters. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> oh. I'm going to get hit with that one now. <laughs> I I really I really wish I'd spent longer looking through the crowd sounds for an ooh. <laughs> I've just or a burn. What? Burn. <laughs> oh, anyway. I'm going to readjust that a little bit. I'm I'm going to put the music on now. The music tonight we're playing through Pretzel Rocks, which means if you are in the chat, you will see what the names of the songs are. And it's oh, all Twitch friendly. We won't hear it though. We're not nice. going to hear it. Yeah, but that's, that's nice. It's powerful to hear us the tune soon. I mean, this is the thing. So long as you don't mind listening to an echo of all the voices, <laughs> <laughs> you can technically listen to it. My name just... is John, and I am joined by Jeff. Hello. I am going to turn the music down a little bit. <laughs> I am joined by Ben. Hello there. <laughs> I am joined by Angel. Uh, what? That, that, that's Good you. <laughs> and we're also joined by Angel's mum. Hello! Because she has nothing better to do with her life. <laughs> that's Hello. why we're all Angel. here. I know. Pretty much. Hera. Uh, now, give it up for the contestants! Yay! We're the sad singles, FBF boss fight pub quizzes. Wow. <laughs> oh. Right, I, I'm, I'm gonna go and really just lie older. down in the bed now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tonight, my ice cream when I need it. <laughs> tonight, we're gonna continue the pub quiz that vaguely started last month before the internet decided. It wasn't one. Yes. Which I'm means. Glad you got it, John. Yeah. Yeah. It 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 came back after about an hour. Um, which yeah. means that tonight, uh, Talon on the Tambril, Angel, Anastasia, and Ben's team as yet named, <laughs> will face off in this challenging pub quiz. I have four rounds of questions. The first based on the French Revolution 1789 to 1799. Please tell me at least oh, one of the questions is where was the fight of the, <laughs> of the French Revolution? Where did the French Revolution take place? Oh god. I should have watched that I video again where he summed it up very China? quickly. No, actually. I mean, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was France. Nope. What? No, it was all done in Spain. They just rented Spain out for the weekend. Oh, that makes sense. You, you don't want to mess up your own world. Uh, because a while ago it was National Chocolate Day, I have a round on chocolate-themed questions. Ooh. Is there a taste Ooh. test? Sadly, no. And I don't... I don't yet have the ability to do a picture round because there were picture round questions of name the chocolate bar. Oh. I have a true or false, true or false round on which false. I feel that you will get 50 50. False. <laughs> I said true first! Can, can, you get, can you get zero on a um, true or false round? Can I mean, we get extra points if we can get zero on a true or false round? <laughs> it is technically possible to get zero on a true or false round. But if you do, we're seriously concerned for you. And then I have a round on general knowledge. The way that this is going to work is the same that the pub quiz, same way that the pub quiz always works. I'm going to read out ten questions. The contestants are going to write down ten answers. At the end of each round, we will go back through and we will score the points. We'll work out who scored the most. Jeff. 
and we'll work out who yeah, scored the who scored less than that. We'll hopefully the rest of educate you a little bit about the about the uh, four topics uh, that are on offer tonight. Can. I do need to learn more about that general. <laughs> yeah, me, me, me general me. knowledge. Yeah, especially John's general, general knowledge. John's knowledge is... uh, 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 general knowledge. That's, get the right hand. There we go. Dib dib dib. I, I don't know. Much. <laughs> I don't know military. <laughs> If... I make up my own ones in fantasy worlds, so that tells you as much. Isn't it Dib 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 Dob Dob Dob? Isn't that Boy Scouts? I don't think that has anything to do with the military, dude. I hope not. They very... will be constructed as well. Very, very small military. <laughs> See their knives, it's pathetic. Uh... <laughs> If you are to war with slingshots. If you are in the chat and you know the answers, please restrain from shouting them out until the end of the round. No, no, no. Please no, put them in the chat. We need them. <laughs> so, without further ado, Ben, by what team name would you like to compete tonight? As yet Benefun. unnamed. Like you said earlier. <laughs> <laughs> as yet unnamed, her currently has zero points as well. Oh, come on, give me a foot up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we move on to round the first. This is on the French Revolution, 1789 to 1799. I'll set this one out. Uh... <laughs> Question one. Which government building was stormed by revolutionary citizens on July the 14th, 1789? To be fair, we've had a whole month to get the answer to this question. <laughs> Most of you have had a whole month to get the answer to this one. Wasn't it Hitler's bunker? I thought it was Isn't Big it... Ben. Oh. You know, no. the Houses of Parliament, it was very important back then. Uh, which government they building? It to America, the who rejected it and sent it back over to Britain. <laughs> uh, which government building was stormed by revolutionary citizens on July the fourteenth, seventeen eighty-nine? Not this one. <laughs> Jeff, do you get the feeling if we uh, asked geeks, well, geek words these questions, they'd I'd hope they get, like, most of them right. I'd hope they get the first one right, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'd be very yeah, the real question is how well they do with history in the first place. I mean, let's face it, history isn't everyone's topic. And hell, I don't know everything about our, our history. It's not to say that we're going to know everything. They're going to know everything about theirs. I would at least hope they get this one right. I'll just say that. Question two. And we uh -huh. now we now enter new territory for everybody here. <laughs> oh no. Let them eat cake was a phrase mistakenly attributed to which French Revolution figure? I actually know this one. The worst part is I should know this one. The worst I literally having scenes in my head of it. <laughs> And I can't we... remember her name. It's something. What's funny is the reason I know it best is from a Far Side cartoon. <laughs> we don't judge where you get your knowledge from. Should. Well, not with the Far Side comics. They're great. I mean, to be honest, I, I got mine from uh, that film... Peabody and Sherman. That's oh slightly goodness. more concerning. <laughs> as long as it gives them the right answer. Uh, we'll see how well they did their research. <laughs> that could be a very valid point. I believe it was mainly historically accurate up until the point of time travel. <laughs> that is when a lot of films fall apart in the historical accuracy. No, they never Start quite get those rules right, do they? <laughs> historical, uh, the historical accuracy wagon usually happens with time travel. Well, it depends on how much they want to destroy travel. time. Adam. Question three. 
the working class people of Paris, particularly the revolutionaries, were better known by what term? The working class people of Paris, particularly the revolutionaries, were better known by what term? I think you're doing a messenger and it's uh, plenty of facts about, um, uh, oh, who's your boyfriend? Severus Snape. Ooh. I didn't know you were seeing Severus. When did that one happen? Congratulations. It's, <laughs> When's it's, the it's, marriage? We've been, we've been playing it on the download for the last couple of years, so. <laughs> but we're now ex you... just expecting someone to burst through the door. Obliviate! Obliviate! <laughs> Yeah, she has had the hots for Alan Rickman for I can't even tell you how many years. My whole fucking life. <laughs> so... My my mum beat you to it. <laughs> oh, you must have been really disappointed in Dogma then. <laughs> I've never seen it. Oh, oh we have. need to show Especially Jennifer if you love Alan Rickman. He he was amazing. But I it? do I do know about the angels being anatomically like Ken dolls, and all I can think is, you know, I'm ace anyway, so that works for me. <laughs> well, it, yeah. Mind you, there are other <laughs> bits which you might not be too keen on, but we'll leave that for you to find Dogma, watch it, and give us a review. Oh, God. Question want four. That, a video now. Right, okay. You're right, you're right. Question four. What was the name of the palace and royal residence of King Louis the Sixteenth until October seventeen eighty nine? Spelt it wrong. I spelt it wrong. I think I spelt it right, but I have a spell checker, so. Oh, I'm I'm doing old fashioned pen and paper, dear. Yeah, I wrote I the question. I was going to say that. I mean, I mean, technically, when it comes down to it, Angel does have a spell check. It's the mum, and she just leaned over. You spelled that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you, are you looking at the answers that Angel's putting down? <laughs> it's it's when Angel's mum leans over with a red pen and draws a wiggly line underneath it. I just want to come over with a lighter. I'm going to win this time. Just lights the answers on fire. I mean, alternatively, she pulls out the blue pen and just wiggle line on. What do you mean I got the grammar wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the little note yeah. in the corner. See me after. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was <laughs> face. <laughs> See, I'm actually drawing as we play, so I've actually got. A I've got a blank canvas open, so that's where I'm writing my answers. Uh, I'm just curious to see, like, get extra points when this one fails. I just like the yeah. uh, the artworks going, and then just suddenly in the middle of some of the line art, it just r spells out the answers. <laughs> it's like suddenly the it's uh, suddenly the hair of this character just spells out Versailles. <laughs> <laughs> Or other French I, words. I just laughed so hard I made my head hurt. <laughs> Question five. That's not how you spell that, but I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. My Thank you very jumping much. up on me to make sure I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> While you're doing that, do you want to answer any of the other ones? Like, uh, quickly come out with number one. Uh... <laughs> Question five. <laughs> what intellectual movement gave rise to many revolutionary ideas in 18th century France? God. What revolutionary ideas? <laughs> what intellectual movement gave rise to many revolutionary ideas in 18th century France? You're not allowed to speak, Jennifer. <laughs> You've been banned from speaking. Ben, ben and Jennifer are like, no, no, let her talk, let her talk. Please do. 
We can open up a private chat between us if you don't, if you like, you know. <laughs> Say whatever you like, quick, whisper it in the microphone, no one will notice. <laughs> There's just John in the corner just watching his, his quiz go down the drain. Question uh, six. Wing. I don't have to get up to get the kids off to college on Monday. <laughs> to, me, to me, the staff are sick. <laughs> Oh dear. Right. Question six. I have gone easy with you for questions six and seven. They are multiple choices. Is Hooray. I'll still Yay! Get it <laughs> Question six. Which of the following words was not part of a famous slogan of the French Revolution? Fraternity. Equality. Prosperity. Or liberty. I mean, none of them are in French, so I don't think they're... Uh... <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> they may be the English translations. Can you say that again, John? <laughs> Which of the following was not part of a famous slogan of the French Revolution? Fraternity, equality... Prosperity or liberty? I'm guessing this is no, going to be wrong, but it's the one which makes sense to me. I mean, I don't suppose you could tell us that famous quote. <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I writing in my answers in ballpoint pen on a notepad, I'm doing joined up writing. Oh, sexy. Fancy. Yeah. With Question. swirls on the walls. Question seven. Which of the following yeah. was not a cause of the French Revolution in 1789? Excessive and unfair taxation. The brutality of royal troops, food shortages and prices, aristocratic privilege. What was the Ooh. second one? Uh, you so kind of. The, oh, their choices again are excessive and unfair taxation, the brutality of royal troops, food shortages and prices, or aristocratic privilege. Now, if you can tell us the answer. No. <laughs> not yet. But one of those was not a cause of the French Revolution. One of these is not like the other. <laughs> one of these is a letter of the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> We're all showing our ages. <laughs> Well, so long as that's all we're showing, that's fine. Um, uh, cheeky, you were the one who was talking about orcs. <laughs> Question A. Yeah, before the stream, that was before the stream. <laughs> Question <laughs> 8. The French revolutionary leader, Marquis, Marquis de Lafayette, was famous for his involvement in which other historical event? The French revolutionary leader Marquis de Lafayette was famous for his, involve his involvement. Oh, one moment while I word. Was famous <laughs> for his involvement in what other event? If I need to shut the door, he's gonna wake up. You know he's gonna to want to go out as soon as it closes. I know, but I'm chilly. Yep, there he goes. I told you. <laughs> you were. Uh, you shut the door? I'd like to use that door. <laughs> now! <laughs> Every time we get up and shut the door because we're freezing our ass off and he's been in the house for 15, 20 minutes. 
snoring. He's like, yeah, no, I, I gotta go back out but right now. I wanna, I wanna go out there. But it's so much better when the door's open. I like it when the door's open. I can come and go when I wake up the door. Open. But the outside, it's gone. It's gone away, mummy. The door, the the outside's gone. I can't see it anymore. Oh, a question nine. <laughs> the revolutionary journalist and politician Jean-Paul Marais Jean-Paul Marais was killed while doing what? Uh, the revolutionary journalist and politician Jean-Paul Marais was killed while doing what? Live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> oh god no! I have no idea so I've guessed. Oh, uh -huh. we have freezing. It's back now. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. There is life on three months more. I think that was just me. No, I froze I'm as sorry. well. No, it was here. It was this end. Ah. And finally, question the 10th. On June the 20th, French politicians at Versailles swore an oath in a hall formerly used for which sport? On June the 20th, French politicians at Versailles swore an oath in a hall previously used for which sport? Paintball. <laughs> I would love that to be the correct answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be freaking awesome, wouldn't it? I have a feeling I would pay more attention to history if it was things like that. Does it involve more people? <laughs> <laughs> just random stuff which is like, what? I didn't think that existed at that point. It did I mean, it was we'll, that it did this. we'll have some interesting facts with some of the answers, because I've found out new things in recent Ooh. couple of days, so... Oh. There is a new fact with one of these answers, but first up, let's get some answers, shall we? Is everybody yes. ready? Never. <laughs> no, but give them to us anyway. Jeff. Ooh. Hello. Which government building was stormed by revolutionary citizens on July the 14th, 1789? So, this is a national holiday in France called Bastille Day. Oh. So this is why I would hope that our friends at Geek Gorge would get this one, because it's one of their national holidays. It... I was going to say, Bastille Day isn't the name of the building, honey. You remove the day <laughs> part, and you get... The, the Bastille Day isn't the name of the national holiday, it's the Bastille. <laughs> Correct! I, but, uh, I, I put down an important <laughs> one. Does that get me anything? No. <laughs> Damn it. Ben. Bastille Day is not an important holiday. Understood. Let us. <laughs> <coughs> it's French. None of them are important. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Well, I can see the. Uh, somebody's trying to get back to Agincourt. <laughs> ben. How's your pleasure? As you do. No. Let them eat cake was a phrase mistakenly attributed to which French revolutionary figure? I really don't know where I got this right, but Lady de Pompadour. Jennifer. Marie Antoinette. Correct. I said let them eat cake and ice cream. <laughs> no record that she ever said it. No. Nope. She may have said something along the lines of let them eat bread and the translations went wonky. <laughs> I think I think it's the idea that she never she because she lived her entire life in the palace. Mm. Lack of bread was never a problem for her, so she said, "Just give them the bread we have, or something like that." Yeah, she didn't understand that if if one thing wasn't available, you could um, get you, you, you. There wasn't a, just a substitute. 
that that you know it the idea was that she just was like well they can have x y or z instead and it, it just showed a complete lack of knowledge as to what was going on beyond the palace walls jennifer I did like another theory which was placed around which was that uh she misunderstood that it was peasants outside just a couple of peasants outside but just if they, yeah just given some of that well, it was like scraps on the table, they'll be fine. Jennifer, the working class people of Paris, particularly the revolutionaries, were better known by what term? Peasants? I didn't know on this one. Jennifer's mum? I, I couldn't remember because there were three levels. And either, is it classified as the lower caste? That's Indian though, isn't it, being a caste? Hmm. But there was a lower something. Jeff. See, I was going to argue about this, but because you specifically said the word revolutionaries, I went with the sans culottes. Correct. The what? The sans culottes. Um, you're, I know, you, I know, I know where you're going with. I was thinking of, the, yeah, because um, they wanted to distance themselves from the aristocracy who used to tuck their trousers into their socks. Oh. Um, I was thinking third estate for a moment. Like you were Ruth, is a third estate, but because John's the question said revolutionaries, I oh. was to that. Well, uh, I just put down scum. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jennifer's from the other perspective. <laughs> Jennifer's mum. Yes. What was the name of the palace and royal residence of King Louis the Sixteenth until October seventeen eighty nine? The Palace of Versailles until he was wrenched out by those awful revolutionaries and taken to Paris. Correct. It was Versailles that nobody shouted out in the middle of the round. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, I get one point for this round. <laughs> I've, I've, I've been there twice now and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's been beautiful. The Hall of Mirrors, unbelievable. The table where the Treaty of Versailles was signed was actually in a glass cage in the Hall of Mirrors. Um, where, you know, where it's... Glass cage? Interesting. Well, you know, glass cube thing. Oh, you know. I, I was and actually was... picturing a cage made out of glass. <laughs> it's like, that's no, an interesting I, way to look I, after I it. A desk for such an important thing signed on it, you know, treaty signed on oh, it. Yeah. And this tiny little, I know, it's like, oh my God. But yeah, it was cool. I went with my ex-husband and then I went with my brother and my daughter. Um, so oh. I've been twice. Absolutely cool. And I was knackered at the end of both times. Because <laughs> that's a lot of palace. It is. And we went through the part of the gardens too. So. Yeah, I know. You, you'd have to do the palace in like three days and then the gardens a month. Oh, we've got some big giant circles playing on pretzel rocks now. You nice. are. The, music. Uh, the band is called Big Giant Circles. Oh, not Crop Circles? No. Uh, uh, to be honest, this is turning out to be a good way to fill up your chat, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, what intellectual movement gave rise to many revolutionary ideas in 18th century France? The Age of Enlightenment. Correct. Damn it, I thought it was the Church of Reason. I put, I it put the guillotine. Does that count? What did you say, sorry, Ruth? The Renaissance. I'm afraid that's a slightly different thing. And um... that's what YouTube told me. <laughs> and, and, um, yeah, Mom's was... been binging videos on the French Revolution. It has not helped her. I know the guillotine's <laughs> been around for a lot longer. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> The guillotine was the removal of intellectual ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it was I mean, an no. intellectual idea to put it there in the first place. And who else would have thought of getting using a giant meat cleaver to kill? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ben. No. Which, which of the following was not a part of the famous slogan of the French Revolution? Uh, I have a feeling that this was like a trap and it just feels like... This seems like the most logical one not to be in it. The fraternity. Jennifer. Damn it. I put, I put fraternity too, actually, because that's that was it, my exact thinking. Ruth. I did the same thing. Fraternity three. <laughs> Jeff, do you want to tell us? It's prosperity. Oh, I forgot. Fraternity, equality, liberty. But I was thinking to myself that this is too easy. 
It has to be something else. I started writing Prosperity, it's like, no, it doesn't make any sense. Prosperity makes more sense. Fraternity has got to be the... Damn it. See, I... I was thinking prosperity, but then I thought, well, part of the reason they're freaking out is because they don't have food or anything, so they would want to prosper. I think so, it was not I, so much that they wanted to prosper as they wanted to be free and equal. And mm. apparently go to colleges and start houses yeah. like, named Omega and such. Uh, they're exactly to start it. Uh, Anyways, go ahead. Jennifer, what of the yeah. following was not a cause of the French Revolution? Uh, was it the brutality of the royal troops? It was. Yes. Yeah, God, I have two points. <laughs> that happened during the revolution. Uh, at, for uh, yeah, but it, it did not lead to it. No, no, I, I got the right answer. That's yes. what I'm saying. It happened yeah. during the revolution, but it was not the beginning of it. Yeah. Um. And it was the peasant women who actually stormed Versailles um, and basically, you know, yeah. had a bit of an uprising there. Yeah. It was just them ladies who were ticked off. I, to be honest, when I came down to that video, pretty much all I remember is, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sums up everything. That sums up the entire video. Yeah. Ruth, the... Uh... Yeah. The French revolutionary leader, Marquis de Lafayette, was famous for his involvement in which other historic event? American Revolution. Correct. Oh, I thought it was because of his affair with Marie Antoinette. He was a busy pup. He went, <laughs> Very busy pup. He attended both of those. Eddie Gizzard <laughs> says that he was talking about a street that's named La Lafayette. And he goes, very important general during your own war. You don't know your own history. Never mind. <laughs> From the sounds of it, he was just constantly revolving. <laughs> uh, Revolt or revolting? Jeff. Hello. Yeah. One thing. The revolutionary journalist hey, and politician Jean-Paul Marais was doing what yeah. while he was killed? Uh, so this is why I laugh when Ben said live streaming because yeah. he was in his bath. Yeah. Another one I remember, oh. but I couldn't remember whether it was the right person or not. <laughs> <laughs> he he was he was in the bath and he was murdered in the bath. Oh, I didn't. One of the key parts I remember from that, just to say, this the most kooky thing I've heard is that literally he didn't get out of his bath. He never got out of his bath. He was He's constantly great. bathing. My well, because he had, he had a skin condition that he yeah. had to he had to um, have this medicine all the time in his bath. My my fun additional fact to that is uh, Madame Tussaud showed up to get his uh, death mask and start work on his waxwork figure so quickly after the death that the uh, the the law enforcement were there arresting the person for the murder while she showed up to get the waxwork started. I know yeah. efficiency right there. So what else am I funny about Because she bloody showed up quick, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I find she funny about him is, um, Just what turning to the other one. Shut up. <laughs> what I find oh, funny I about him I had nothing to do with it. I just happened to come by with all my equipment ready and available. And now yeah. Jeff. <laughs> yes. What I find funny about it is he, he wrote this newspaper in which he... Um, did all his revolutionary rhetoric, and it's called The People's Friend. <laughs> so that magazine that we have in this country on the shelves, yeah. <laughs> and finally, Ben. Yeah. On June the 20th, French politicians... French politicians at Versailles <laughs> swore an oath in a hall that was used for which sport? Tennis? Yes. Hey, that's a loose. They they signed the oath on the or swore an oath on a tennis court. Funny enough, it's yep. called the tennis court oath. I mean, I don't know where they got the name from. Well, I think it was Baddington. Uh, <laughs> so before we move, before we move on, Talon, how did you do, Talon on the tumbril? That was all ten of them. 
Angel. Angel. Yeah, just give up now. Uh... <laughs> Angel, how'd you do? Uh, I got four. Which is uh, better than some of the other ones I've done. <laughs> Ruth. Uh, six. And as yet unnamed. Four, which was better than I was expecting. Hey, you two paid off. What can I say? <laughs> and Eddie is odd for American Revolution. Yeah. <laughs> so now we can move on to round two of this challenging pub quiz. This month, chocolate. Oh, mm, chocolate. sweet chocolate. Question one. Godiva is a chocolate company from which country? Godiva, was that, sorry? Godiva. I mean, there's only like 172 of them to choose from. What, countries <laughs> or chocolates? <laughs> countries mm. question two toffee penny and the purple one are chocolates from which popular selection box Feeling some people may have a bit of an unfair advantage on this question. <laughs> John, I have a feeling that someone had an unfair advantage during the last round. <laughs> <laughs> question three. Which best selling milk chocolate was first introduced in 1904? I'm just randomly guessing with titles of chocolates. <laughs> just uh, what was the full? What was the full one of that one again? What was the full question? Uh, which best-selling milk chocolate was first introduced in 1904? Right. Are you ready for question four? I'm. I'm just getting hungry now, really. But uh, you know, keep going. <laughs> Which chocolate box selection is famous for the advertising line and all because the lady loves... Me. Uh... <laughs> you wish. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Aww. Need some chocolate now, that's depressing. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Well, because the lady loves. No. Oh, because the lady loves. Can't say that without this being censored. <laughs> Before you do say that, we'll go to question five. <laughs> Which popular chocolate bar is shaped like a frog? I'm actually confident in the answer. Yes. Those nice ones from Harry Potter, they were lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Question six. Which popular brand of chocolate is known as Dove in the US?
Oh god. Uh Lucky it's the same one as so soap over there. That'd be funny. <laughs> I know, right? That's what I was I... thinking myself. Is like, can you imagine going up and getting something and just taking a bite into it? It's <laughs> wrong. Okay. Uh, the wrong one. Uh, uh, wrong one. Is, the ch is the one you give your kids when they swear? Who pays? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Question seven. In which year of the 1980s was Mars Bar Ice Creams first introduced? Well, technically this one's multiple choice. Yeah, uh, there's, there's a few <laughs> more choices, but... God, I'm not going to try. Lay down, baby. <laughs> no, Clipso, the chocolates are very interesting. Sit down. <laughs> she's, she's nesting. And it drives me nuts. It's because she's old. She's nesting. She's had her tubes tied. There's nothing to nest for. No, but she likes to snuggle. So we all like I. a cuddle every now I'm and again. Lovely. We do. All because the ladies love snuggling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael has offered to snuggle you many times. <laughs> I've yet to meet Michael. There may be reasons for that. <laughs> Are you keeping us separated? <laughs> yes. I mean, we attempt to, usually locked in the toilet. Uh... Question eight. Which popular sweet treat comes in milk chocolate, peanut, and crispy varieties? Say it again. Which popular sweet treat Comes in milk chocolate, peanut, and crispy varieties. Chocolate. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with uh, chocolate. <laughs> Question nine. What is the main ingredient in the popular chocolate filling praline? Raylene filling. I have a guess. Do we need to be specific? She meant Pacific. <laughs> no, you don't have to be an ocean. <laughs> I do that to my brain because for a second there I legit thought I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not incredibly. Okay. It has to be something which is actually in it, though. I mean, it does have to be the main ingredient, <laughs> but... And finally, question ten. Which country eats the most chocolate per person per year? Oh. And if you're taking a wild stab in the dark, that one's also multiple choice because there are only so many countries. <laughs> Get out your globes, spin them, stick your finger on it, and wherever it stops, it may be the right answer. Possibly. Just imagine doing that. There's if loads of chocolate desert. falls off the uh, globe, uh, point at that bit. Let's see now, let's see now, let's see now, let's see now. So, full country, eh? Yep. Which country eats the most chocolate per person per year? Oh, this is pretty much a difficult one out of the lot. Because in my mind there's an obvious answer, but I don't think it's right. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Yeah, same here. Are we ready for some answers? Not really, no, but go ahead. Go for it. Ben. Uh-huh. Godiva is a chocolate company from which country? Belgium? Yes. Hey. 
Where? Belgium. Should be England. What? <laughs> Is that just because you wrote England? <laughs> no. Lady Godiva. Yeah. That's okay, I put France. To be Jennifer. honest, I think it was a region, but still. <laughs> Jennifer, Toffee Penny and the purple one are chocolates in which popular selection box? Are those the roses? No. Ruth. Oh, that's what I put down too, because I couldn't remember the other one. Jeff. <coughs> Quality Street. They are indeed Quality Street. Quality Street. What it was. We had a big trouble of things last weekend. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I thought, but I couldn't remember what was on the fucking box. I can remember it was a purple top. Yeah. But I couldn't remember <laughs> the type of name on the purple top. I was trying to visualize it. Cause the and guy, finally I went roses, because I know that name. The guy, the guys we went to the cabin with, they picked up a whole bunch of chocolate at Tesco's, and they got a tub of Celebrations, and they got a tub of the purple one. And the I- Celebrations are in the red tub. Yeah. And I couldn't remember what the purple one was, so I thought it was roses. Question and three, fuck. Ruth. Oh, uh... Which best-selling milk chocolate was first introduced in 1904? I just put dairy milk. Correct. <laughs> fuck, I put Hershey's. No, I said popular. <laughs> oh! Shots yeah, fired. I'm actually, from America. Actually, I, I didn't. I put best-selling, but... Uh. <laughs> well, the thing is, all I know is first Pennsylvania has, like, a factory, but I didn't know how long that had been around, so... <laughs> Jeff, which chocolate box selection yeah. is famous for the advertising line and all because the lady loves? Average milk tray. Correct. Cadbury's milk cream? Milk tray. Right. Oh. That luxurious thing in purple. All because the ladies love milk tray. Honestly, I put roses on that one too, because ladies like roses, but, you know. That's too logical. Ben, which popular chocolate bar is shaped like a frog? The Freddo. Correct! And it should still cost 10p, but it doesn't. I know. Nothing costs 10p. Well, except to go p. Well, it I depends think... if you can find someone. Uh... <clears throat> Jennifer, as as you're from the States, what brand of chocolate is better known as Dove in the US? Cadbury's? Ruth. I put Galaxy. You are correct. It is Galaxy Chocolate is better known as Dove in the United States for reasons of... Mm. Oh. Damn it. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Never mind. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> they actually did have to give you notice. Oh, yeah. Uh, Ruth, in what year of the 1980s were the Mars Bar ice creams first introduced? 1984. No, Jeff. 1988? Nope. Ben. About 1987. Jennifer. I put 88 as well. I'm afraid it was 89. Oh. oh the year, yeah. the year of my birth. <laughs> Damn it. You know, the funny thing is, I was almost going to put 89. I'm all like, yeah, but am I picking it because I think that's the answer or because it's my birthday? So. <laughs> it felt too that's late. It. it felt too late. <laughs> Jeff. Which popular Hello. sweet treat comes in milk, chocolate, peanut, and crispy varieties? M&M's. It is indeed M&M's. That was the only one I was confident about. Oh, that and the Fred Hill one. <laughs> ben, what is the main ingredient in the popular chocolate filling praline? I wasn't sure, but I put hazelnuts. The answer I have been given is nuts. So I will That's allow, I will allow hazelnuts or nuts. See, that's why I asked how specific we needed to be, because I was thinking hazelnuts, but I didn't, I wasn't sure, so I just put nuts. So cool. <laughs> I put praline nuts because it's called praline. Well, you oh, still you put, put nuts. nuts. You put nuts. 
She is nuts. You are pushing my sensor button so close, right? Now. <laughs> Why do you like nuts? <laughs> and she loves nuts. She just hasn't gotten any in a while. <laughs> Jennifer. Yeah. Which country eats the most chocolate per person per year? You. Oh, uh, Denmark? Ruth. America. Jeff. Switzerland. Correct. The Swiss. Yeah, Swiss. How close is I must have said I wasn't sure, so I went for the land of chocolate, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> No, apparently it's the Swiss. Mm. So, Jeff. Got eight on that one, right? Oh, we've got no chance. Come on, this was our specialty <laughs> subject. <laughs> Angel. Um, I got three, so I'm at seven. Ruth. Four, so I'm at ten. Bitch. <laughs> and as yet unnamed. 11, so I'm now at 11. Racing into second place is as yet unnamed. See if you can keep this going, or if we need to shoot Jeff and stop him from coming to the next pub quiz. I mean, if that's yeah. an option. I mean, yeah. <laughs> as we move into true or false. No. Or two. All, all of the answers to these are either true or false. False. Fuck. <laughs> and to give people a chance to catch up... Jeff, you need to hop now. <laughs> <laughs> if the answer is false, I will give you a bonus point if you can tell me the correct answer. No. So there are bonus no, points really on offer. So basically this is yeah. I'm actually. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Question one. Admiralty Arch at the end of the Mall in London was built in the 19th century. Admiralty Arch at the end of the Mall in London was built in the 19th century. Hmm. That piece of music was annoying me, so I skipped it. That's not a question, that's just a statement. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Can I find a friend? Oh, you can't really no, have a 50-50 on this round. Question two. There are a total of 202 bones in the human body. Give me a few hours to count them. <laughs> are we talking the adult human body? Yes. Are we talking about a perfect specimen of human body and not a person who's, say, lost a leg? Also, yes. <laughs> Question three. Nitrous oxide was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1776. Nitrous oxide was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1776. Maybe. <laughs> That's not the answer. <laughs> Jennifer's going T, F, or M. <laughs> True, false, or maybe. <clears throat> you go. Can I press X? Can I press X to doubt? <laughs> I mean, if, 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 if it's true or false, can we just say yes? <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Mm -hmm. Astrophobia is the fear of lightning. Astrophobia is the fear of lightning. 
Why did I never learn Latin? Uh. Well, I'll tell you that language? phobia means fear. How about Astra? Not giving you that one yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I believe it's a small car. <laughs> Yeah, my uncle's had a few over the years. Didn't you have an Astra for a while? Who are you talking to? You. Nope. Oh! Oh, shit. What was that car I swapped the Hyundai with? I thought the that Astra. was the app. <laughs> Question five. The German invasion of Poland was codenamed Operation Barbarossa. The German invasion of Poland was codenamed Operation Barbarossa. No, ba 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 uh, ah. <laughs> for a dance, looking for romance, saw Barbarossa, so I thought I'd take a chance, ba 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 uh, <laughs> if you were going to take that chance, were you oper op uh, invasioning in Poland? <laughs> <laughs> and are you are you German? <laughs> I will never tell. <laughs> question he has the questions here. Question <laughs> six: The opera Madame Butterfly was written by Verdi in 1892. The opera Madame Butterfly was written by Verdi in 1892. This is like one of those, you know, fill the dots in when you take an exam and then you realise you filled in a whole bunch of D's so you change some of them to B's <laughs> or C's. <laughs> Question 7. The musical instruction Allegro means quick. The musical instruction Allegro means quick. It's your butt. That's your butt. True or false? True. It's your butt. That is your foot. It's your foot. It's I'm just, your foot. I'm just gonna. Yeah, ah. I'm sleepy. I should have really assigned what heads or tails meant. It would have been an idea. <laughs> um. Question it eight. Makes... Jacqueline Dupree was a famous British harpist. Oh, go lay down! You only got up because I shut the damn door. No. <laughs> He's literally been laying there. In, in the grass. And now he walked in, got all sleepy and curled up. I shut the door literally two minutes after he came in. Look at him, he's curled up so tight because he's cold. It, not happening, dude! <laughs> Jacqueline Dupree was a famous British harpist. Our dog might be a giant troll. Uh huh. Well, that'd be interesting. Coming up next in D and D in the final boss fight. Last it's boss is right. a dog. <laughs> I dropped my. Edward. Oh, oh, you had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> You evil! Was it Party versus the Dog in the MCM game? Yeah. Here, Fido. <laughs> I cannot believe you would bring that shit up. And Mom doesn't get it, so she has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> Edward. Uh, not that one. No, John, it's not fair. The Question. PTSD is rude, man. <laughs> Question nine. And it's really one way to make him really a part of the family. The she Beatles. Said. <laughs> <laughs> Question nine. The Beatles film A Hard Day's Night includes the songs 
All my lovin' and can't buy me love. The Beatles film A Hard Day's Night includes the songs All My Lovin' and You Can't Buy Me Love. So the reference is from an, an anime about alchemy and a state alchemist goes crazy trying to keep his license and basically fuses his daughter and a dog making this horrifying amalgamation. Um, Chimera. They spend like three three episodes getting to know the little girl and her precious dog. And so when you see what he's done and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it is literal trauma. <laughs> Especially when he literally comes up and looks at them directly. And what? I know. I and it's a... and it just sounds like it's in so much pain. It's just awful. You know, Chimera is a it probably is. Thing. It looked miserable as well. It did. It's just, it was horrible. I mean, well, I would like have a lot. At least a bit of childhood vigor. Yeah, <sighs> but it's like you don't want, you don't even want to know what went into trying to make it. Ooh. Question yep. ten. Yep. Famously, the name of the horse of Napoleon the First of France was Copenhagen. Famously, the name of the horse of Napoleon I of France was Copenhagen. I mean, to be fair, when it comes down to horse names... Shy of high ho silver? I don't think I know any. <laughs> Red Ram. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Red Rum is not a horse name. Actually, uh, I think that was in the um, really? the Grand National at one point. Wasn't it wasn't it? said like that, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the filmic reference. Well my father had a dream that a snail won the Grand National. And that year, a horse called Escargo won the Grand National. He should have bet. I told him, have you had any more dreams of the Grand National? Yeah, if he, if he suddenly dreams of like six numbers at the end of the week, if you just let us all know... Yeah, that could come in <laughs> handy. Just so you know... That just... would be handy. Hell no, if nobody's won the 187 million yet. <laughs> uh, somebody in France won it yesterday. Oh, oh stop it, a biscuit. Anyway, are we ready for some answers? I guess. Okay, let's do it. Jennifer. Admiralty Arch yeah. at the end of the Mall in London was built in the 19th century. True or false? True? Ruth? That's what I put. Jeff? True. I put true, but I'm getting the feeling it's the other one. Yeah. Ben? I put false, thinking maybe it was the 18th. It is false. It was built in 1910. The 20th century. Right. 20th century. Well, at least get one point out of that. I did. I did wonder. I was. I I was thinking you were trying to slip us up by saying 19th <laughs> century, so we would think. Yeah. It's, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Ruth, there are a total of 202 bones in the human body. Well, there are, but if you add a few more, then you'll get a whole body. Yeah. There's a, a and that's a valid of... point, actually. A very valid point. <laughs> um, if you want a whole human being at adulthood and there's not been any major trauma, you should have, I think it's just over 300 bones in your body. You have way too many bones in your body if that's that many you got. It's 206. Oh my god, I got it right! It is, it is false. Point. 
And there are 206 bones in the adult human body. There's about 226 when you're first born, and then they all sort of fuse together to make things like the skull. Yeah, because it's like eight, six or eight separate plates that fuse. Mm. Which is why you really shouldn't drop a baby on its head. Among I mean, there's reasons. a whole list of reasons why that's not a great idea. Pick the baby. <laughs> Don't kick the baby. <laughs> Don't kick the baby. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> Nitrous oxide was discovered by Joseph Priestley in 1776. I put down false because I believe he's a guy who wrote Inspector Calls. Ben. I put down ah. true because I didn't know. It was indeed true, and he had a right good laugh doing it because obviously it's laughing gas. Laughing gas, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he may have done other stuff as well. I'm, you know. Who's the JB Priestley then that runs Special Calls? I think so. Because I went over that yes. in, for English with uh, my cousin. No I should know. I was massively into theater so i should know this stuff but obviously i shoved that out to learn more dnd uh, jb Priestley yes. was a john boynton Priestley, mm. and i should remember that one because there was a massive statue of him in bradford but i don't remember if i ever looked up what the j stood for I yes, see. Yes. But I, I, I do not believe they were related because Joseph Priestley uh, was not from the same area and was about a hundred years earlier. Wasn't it Jason Priestley a really bad actor in the nineties? I mean, that's that's even later still. <laughs> ben. Yes. Astrophobia is the fear of lightning. I said false. I think it's a fear of open space because I'm trying to go astro to astrology. Jennifer? I'm pretty sure it's false because it's thunder, isn't it? Ruth? Damn true. It is true. Astrophobia <laughs> is the fear of lightning. I would have said fear so of which one's the fear of thunder? That makes no sense. Uh, technically, astrophobia is the fear of thunder and lightning. Can I get half a point then? Uh, but also, brontophobia is a fear of loud noises. What fear of stars? What's the fear of stars? I'm giving what myself half a point. Open uh, spaces is agoraphobia. Fear of the stars yeah. is astrophobia. Oh, oh come on. It really was be astro rather than astra. So I was thinking like the fear of open space, actually literal space, not as in open spaces. I've gotten, I've voted for people to have half points for less. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a half point for that one. Thank you. Is it uh, physics ways? <laughs> Jennifer. Yes. The German invasion of Poland was codenamed Operation Barbarossa. I went with true because I have no fucking idea. Ruth. <laughs> I went with false, but I don't know the real codename. But you are correct that it is false. I don't know the correct codename, but what I do have written down, I could look it up. What I do have is what that was the actual code name for. So does anybody know what Operation Barbarossa was actually their code name for? German invasion of Russia. Correct. Taking yeah. over the Beach Boys. It, it's when they went to Russia. Uh. You mean Napoleon, and it was still a bad idea. Their failed attempt <laughs> at invading Russia. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say I it was a successful. Still a bad idea. It's a bad idea for the exact same reason. We have, yeah. we have, it's cold. We have a different idea. We have a di uh, no. It's the same idea. It's the same idea. <laughs> Hitler never I mean, played. Enough, the weather doesn't change much in in that time. <laughs> there, uh, 
Having Google searched it just now, the uh, strategic plan for the invasion of Poland was codenamed Case White. Huh. Huh. Or Plan White. Let you know. Interesting. White. Because they didn't have a W. Uh, Ruth. Well, that's yeah. The operation, the opera, not the operation. The opera Madame Butterfly was written by Verdi in 1892. I'm gonna go with a true on that one. Jeff. Yep. I said true as well. I'm sure it's Verdi. Or ben. It's wrong, I said true as well. I'm guessing I'm wrong. Jennifer. I put true. It was false. It was Puccini in 1904. Both, um, both the year and the writer was wrong. So remember we talked about the start about the challenge of getting zero on a true or false one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Jeff. I think. Yeah. The musical instruction Allegro means quick. Yes, it does. Yes, true. it's true. There you go, you've not got zero. Is the only reason I knew the answer to that one is because Sander Cohen shouts it and I just play Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> and he's yelling at the poor guy at the piano before he blows him up. <laughs> allegro, Allegro. Ben. Oh god, Sander Cohen, you sick fuck. Boom. <laughs> ben. Huh? Jacqueline Dupree was a famous British harpist. I said false. I said they were French. You are correct, it's false. You did Ooh. not pick out the correct thing. Did anybody else say a different thing? Is it cello? No, I, I knew it was false, but I couldn't remember what she was. Played the cello. Jeff is correct, she was a cellist. Jennifer, the Beatles film, A Hard Day's Night, includes the songs All My Lovin', and can't buy me love. I went with true because I don't remember either of those being in Yellow Submarine, so. You are correct, it's true. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> it was one of the things I had no idea, I couldn't remember. <laughs> and Ruth, famously the name of Napoleon, uh, the name of the horse of Napoleon I of France was Copenhagen. I said true. Jeff. False, but I've got no idea what it would be. Ben, any idea what the... No, I put down true. <laughs> Jennifer? I had false, but I didn't know what it was. Well, anybody who put down false is correct. It was false. His actual horse is Marengo. That's an odd name. It was a horse. I mean, even for a horse, that sounds like an odd name. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't really say nay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, how did you do that round? Eight, no, it's one, seven out of 16, I think would be the total for that round. Uh, seven, so that is 25. Angel. Uh, I got seven and a half, so I'm now at 14 and a half. She's pretty good on that round. <laughs> Ruth. Uh, five, so I'm at 15. And as yet unnamed. Five, so I'm now at 16. <laughs> Looking at the 25, thinking, how the hell? <laughs> well, Can it's... you take a break for this one? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's come down to very close together in the middle of the pack there. <laughs> I did really good on this round, and I'm still losing. Because <laughs> you're a loser, which is what I tell you every time you stream. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and so finally, <laughs> we move on to general knowledge. Okay. Please be entirely about me. <laughs> <laughs> what did Ben <laughs> have for breakfast today? <laughs> Good question, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> question one. 
which pair of British children's TV show presenters hosted their In Da Bungalow show? Question 2. The 1415 Battle of Agincourt took place in which country? Say that again, you cut out. The 1415 Battle of Agincourt took place in which country? I'm gonna guess. <laughs> That's a fair way of doing things, to be honest. Question three. Telephone numbers beginning 01418 are most commonly associated with which Scottish city? Ben has Ooh. redeemed a stretch. Oh. Yeah, I just needed one. Oh, if I do the stretching up over my shoulders, all of my background suddenly reappears through the haze of the... <laughs> Telephone numbers beginning 01418 are most commonly associated with which Scottish city? <clears throat> what do you mean you guys haven't all memorised the phone book? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like... You just had a very busy week. I don't think I even know any Scottish cities. Uh, They're London. in Scotland. Try, try London. Just try it. Try London. <laughs> Question four. Artist Joseph Malord William Turner gives his name to which annual art prize? Turner Classic Movies? <laughs> Question 5. Which Canadian singer had a 2012 hit with Call Me Maybe? Oh. God <laughs> damn it. Is that one that sung it, right? Uh... Yeah, I know. Oh, God. Yes, having it play constantly in my head isn't helping, Brain. <laughs> I know, right? Brain, who is singing the song in my head? If you could tell me, maybe. I know I just met my brain. And this is crazy, but if he could work for me, maybe? <laughs> and to be honest, I do want to talk to you as well, so if you could call me, maybe, as well. <laughs> Question six. Which Conservative MP for Tatton served as Chancellor of the Exchequer between 2010 and 2016? <laughs> Half of that sounded like you spoke in Klingon, so I have no fucking clue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which well, what did you call them again? Which Conservative MP for Tatton served as Chancellor of the Exchequer between 2010 and 2016. What on earth is a for Tatton? For Tatton. MP for Tatton. Okay. Microphone, why are you moving so far away? Come, come, come this way a bit. <laughs> come, um. come. There we go. Don't, don't be scared, microphone. Question seven. Question seven. <laughs> Question seven. Which US yeah. American car company uses the slogan to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport? What the hell is that? <coughs> I don't 
going through puberty. Um, Again. Which US it. American car company uses the slogan to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport? That's my answer. Uh, <laughs> the one that make the cargo zoom. <laughs> the one that makes the cargo zoom. I thought that was the French though. <laughs> no, the French one goes va va voom. <laughs> Well, you got that one from Alabama. <laughs> Question eight. Composer Johann Sebastian Bach was born in which European country? Composer Johann Sebastian Bach was born in which European country? Why have I now got Family Guy running in my head? I can't answer that. Oh, uh, I can't even comment on what, what I'm doing, <laughs> what one's running at the moment either. If it's a uh, Johann Sebastian Bach in a police station donning sunglasses and saying, I'll be Bach. No, no. Oh, it was when Peter went to no. a music shop and was uh, asking for information. And, you know, going through about Mozart and uh, Dipoldi and all that. Uh, you know, you know. Always, end, always finish on the park, never on the bus. Question nine. That's terrible. <laughs> I wondered when they were going to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Question 9. Which US musician played Napster founder Sean Parker in the film The Social Network? Oh. What was the question? Who played the Napster founder in The Social Network? No, I thought he said something more about... Which US yeah, which... musician played Napster founder Sean Parker in the film The Social Network? Napster. That's a day and a half ago. Oof. Only a day and a half? I could have sworn it's gone for longer than that. That's a New York <laughs> day and a half. It's a bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Top Hat, why uh, did you get here? Top Hat, why are you being entirely keyed out by the... Okay, bye. What did you do? <laughs> Top hat went away. <laughs> I just I just found a top hat when I moved the moved the mic stand. It's going over there now. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's an amazing magic trick you're doing. <laughs> I mean, it'd be better if I could magic a top hat that fitted. <laughs> True. Or a top hat with a bunny in it. Look, as long as it's not a dead dove. No, don't question what's in my top hat. And yes, I mean, John's gonna have a lunch as well. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's been in there a while. <laughs> Question 10. Oh. <laughs> Williams, Bosque, and Komichi are varieties of which fruit? Say that again. Commis. Hello? Williams, Bosk, and Commis are varieties of which fruit? Williams, Bosk, and Commis. Commis. Surprise attack! The Wicked God's Secret Maneuvers just started playing. Maneuvers. 
No, it's more like a gesture at this point. <laughs> so going back to rabbits real quick, my mom loves my aunt so much, and she loves rabbits. So my mom consistently sends her pictures of cute bunnies attached to recipes for rabbit stew. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently my say, brother... Rabbit is a lovely meat. I mean, it I've never actually had good. rabbit. I don't think I've ever actually uh, had rabbit. You it's haven't? Good. This I think so. really good. It can be tough if not prepped properly, but it's good. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, and that's the thing you get and, in the uh, right thing. You get that in a nice uh, rabbit pie. It's beautiful. I haven't had it in pie. I think I've had hair in pie. I've had a... I've had... You're meant to pick those out. It's, yeah. <laughs> we had a, yeah, a rabbit and a... But, no. I see a game not. pie with rabbit in as well, so... Well, a nice rabbit and game pie. Are we ready for some answers? Yeah, because I... Uh, Jeff, you won! Pick a... Pick a... <laughs> Specialty fucking frickin' frickin' category. Okay, since Jeff picked the last three categories, I vote that we let the second place winner pick. Alright, Ben, you get ready. Okay, let's get some answers. Jeff, which pair of yes. children's TV presenters hosted their In Da Bungalow show? Dick and Dom. Indeed, Dick and Dom In Da Bungalow was a show. Wow, I thought it was Ant and Dick. So. That's what I put down because we haven't no, been in no, a No, no, Dick and Dumb. They uh, did the classic one, which you might have seen, which is going around all the places playing bogeys. Nope. Nope. Really? We don't really watch terrestrial TV. Oh, to be honest, I thought it was something which might, you might have spotted on the internet. If nothing else, I think if nothing else, we will send a link to Angel of just demonstrating bogeys. <laughs> I think that's necessary now. Ben. Yes. The 1415 Battle of Agincourt took place in which country? France. Correct. What was the answer? France. France. I'm right. You might notice it was related to the first round. <laughs> I mean, it was somewhat earlier. <laughs> somewhat? Well, you know, about 300 years or so. Somewhat earlier. I found a puppy belly. A big puppy Is it belly. attached to a puppy? I hope yeah. so. It's if you tell me you found it in the fridge, I'm very disturbed. <laughs> Jennifer, name a Scottish city. <laughs> wow, that question got a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> the question. 01481? Yeah, no, and that's why I'm saying fuck you and why. That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth. I put Glasgow, but then I question marked Inverness, but I'm, I'll go with my first answer, which is Glasgow. Glasgow's, Glasgow's correct. Isn't... Dang it, I put Edinburgh. I put Edinburgh. I was going to put Glasgow, but then I wasn't confident that it was actually in Scotland. You're an idiot. The two major cities. <laughs> <laughs> uh, down, but yeah, Glasgow and Edinburgh and Inverness is really impressive. I really, I'm you really starting to think the FBF road trip needs to go further north for Jennifer's sake. <laughs> no, my mom was born just outside of Inverness. Yes. Yeah, yeah on an English okay. airbase. I think we'll just do a final boss fight cruise next, and uh, yeah, maybe. that takes us right around the entire coast. I'm sure it'll be fine. And then we drop off in Scotland. Ruth. The artist Joseph oh, Malord William Turner gives his name to which annual art prize? I put the Turner Prize for Literature. It is the Turner Prize. I mean, I feel like that should have been an obvious answer. Why didn't I get that? Yeah. I don't know. Both the word Turner and prize were in the question. It was one of those things where I wrote the answer and it's like, that can't be right. But, oh, so <laughs> it'll do that one anyway. Jeff. Which John. Jeff. Yes, there is. Jeff. Yeah. I mean, Jeff. Whatever. Which Canadian yeah. singer has a 2012 hit with "Call Me Maybe"? Carly Rae Jepsen. Yeah. Who? Thank Carly Rae Jepsen. She did, was in that ballerina movie, and I was trying to remember, and I did, couldn't. Did everybody else get the name out of their heads, or is the song still going? <laughs> song still going. The song still I going. The fact that you. You brought it back up again, and all of a sudden it's there. You know. I love that teen bopper. 
I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, I've got the space version in my head playing now. Uh... Ben. Yes. Which Conservative MP for Tatton served as Chancellor of the Exchequer between 2010 and 2016? I had no idea, so I put Mr. Ben. Uh... <laughs> Jennifer. But he dressed in a lot of different costumes, I was hoping. Um... Ruth? A anyone? No. George Osborne. Jeff? George Osborne. Correct. Yeah, mate. He was David Cameron, Cap David Cameron, David Cameron's chancellor, and he went with him when David Cameron lost the Brexit election. I love the imagery which immediately went in my head of him just packing him into a suitcase. He didn't go too far. He didn't go too far. He became an editor of the Uni Standard. <laughs> I didn't go too far. Jennifer. Yeah. Which US American car company uses the slogan to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport? Ford. Ruth. That's rubber stumps. Is it Tesla? Correct. Wow. I put Ford as well. It is Tesla. Ooh. I thought Tesla was through Ford. Sustainable. Yeah, no, but I thought Tesla was through Ford. So Ford Tesla just want you to keep buying Fords. Yeah, but the other side of things, when they first started, the only reason I thought Ford was when they were starting around, and especially when it came down to the whole racing side of things, they wanted to make cars which were more affordable, would last longer, and all that, that was pretty much their, their stable, their whole point and selling point. But I had to change around and say, oh, okay, fair their, enough. Their latest slogan is, Built Ford proud. It used to be built Ford tough. Now they're proud of it. Because they're probably made in Japan or something. <laughs> Let's just bring back the Mark One again, just see what happens. <laughs> Ruth, where was Bach born? Hey, you just asked me one, didn't you? Yeah, you did. Jeff. <laughs> I'm from Austria. Ben. Germany? Correct. Yeah. I'm from Germany first, I thought, no, they're, all, they're always born in Austria. <laughs> <laughs> no, sadly, he was one that was born in Germany. And that was how the war began. Uh, <laughs> ben. You keep on getting all the good ones. Right. Yes. Sorry, that was the Italians chiming in. <laughs> ben. Which US musician played Napster founder Sean Parker in the film The Social Network? Justin Timberlake. Correct. Hang on, did you just say... Oh, disregard. <laughs> Please tell me you thought that was the answer to question 10 for a moment. <laughs> and finally, question 10. Williams, Bosk and Comice are varieties of which fruit, Jennifer? I have no fucking clue. Ruth. Can you guess? I guessed oranges, but then I just had a, I just had a, ooh, I'll do a second guess, because I know and I'm not allowed, because oranges, well, let like my answer, but I, I guess, secondly, like, bananas. Jeff? I don't know where that came from. I went for oranges. Ben? I went for apples. They're pears. Hmm. Oh, God. The worst part is... I know that for because we're having a, a, a tree put in our workplace in memory of our, our friend Gary Williams and then planting a Williams tree. And you'll uh, get... Well, I forgot which fruit that was. You'll get pears. We grew plums this year. We did. Right. Jeff, I'm how did one. you do? I got five <laughs> for that one. Angel. I didn't get a single fucking one. You didn't? Nope. Ruth. Okay. Uh, four, so I have a total of 19. I didn't even get halfway through the points out of 40. Mm. How bad is that? And Ben. I got six, so that takes me up to 22. Shut up! So... Once again, Jeff wins it, but I do feel that his uh, iron grip over the uh, round naming should probably come to an end. As a novel idea instead, 
bloody history or yeah. the Marvel Universe or something else that's nerdy. As a, as a suggestion, um, and just to put forward, why not have it so that the person who comes in last, so they get a fighting chance next time? I mean, I like that. How does everybody feel about that? No, I think that's a great idea. Thanks for suggesting it, Jeff. I think that's a lovely thought. That was that me! Is... <laughs> that was Ben. Ben, sorry! <laughs> sorry, Ben! Squish out! <laughs> My so, only my impersonations of Jeff have come amazingly in leaps and bounds. <laughs> that is a lovely idea. That really is. So, um, Angel. I, somebody's general knowledge questions are a little less general. They're general. <laughs> no, uh, oh, yeah. Like, I go to London and look at the arch and figure out when it was damn well built, dude. That was true or false? Oh, whatever. He's got you on that one. Oh, false. <laughs> I said, well, that was general knowledge, too, if you think about it. True. Angel. Um, ha, true, you got that one right. <laughs> what would you like the round to be in the next pub quiz, Angel? Don't be a bitch. You know, I was... <laughs> I'm sitting right here, Jennifer. Yeah, I know. I was going to go with Magical Girls, but why don't we go with Disney animated films? I like it. We'll... Specifically just the animated films. We'll go with Disney animated films, so tune in next month, which will take place on or around... Oh shit, let me add that to my calendar. The 20th of November. Jeez, that's getting a little too close to certain holidays. Thanksgiving. Oh. So tune in in a month's yeah, time fun. for Disney animated films and three other rounds that I'll have to come up with between now and then. <laughs> and but, don't worry, just ask Jeff, he'll come up with three for you. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> drop Jeff a line, I'll see what he says. <laughs> uh, so that was the FBF pub quiz. Round of applause. Thank you. Yeah! And congratulations, Jeff. Well, well done, well. Jeff. Well done, Jeff. Well done. And he we... logged off to avoid all the hate he was going to get for winning it. No, he did. <laughs> we are going to go over so, to the credit screen and say thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, please do hit that follow button. It's a great way for you guys to know when we go live in a completely free way that you can support us on the channel. Tomorrow night... We'll be picking up after Jennifer sat on the snake chair. She's an idiot. So we'll see how Look, that goes. No one's ever accused me of being smart. <laughs> and no one ever... Smart ass. Yeah, maybe. On Monday night, I'll be back with more Mass Effect, where I'm probably going to be moving on with the main plot line again after last week's side quest of Palooza. Uh, Tuesday next week we've not got anything on the schedule but uh, Back for Blood just came out so if you like surviving against hordes of certain types creatures. of monstrous creatures uh, controlled by worms tune in for that no, I... uh, we are not sponsored by Beyond NRG but they do have a drink out in association with said uh, game release so if you like your Beyond NRGs get your uh, Bloodbury I think it's called we'll probably is this, is this where we're supposed to provide a discount code but we don't have one uh, I mean <laughs> technically <laughs> we're not sponsored they, they don't pay sponsored. us so I haven't actually tested the new one I think Sean has some on order um but tune in on Tuesday to see some of that game that we'll play. Because that's how games work. <laughs> Wednesday this week, hopefully we're going to have some more adventures with the Golden Tooth. As they are currently in... Uh, they are currently in Myra Madra, just outside the Colosseum. And they are going to have a fight for their lives on their hands as they are invading the demonically enhanced... 
town of Myra Madra. So tune in As for you that. Do. Uh, Angel, you've got Bioshock 2 this uh, Thursday. Yes, I did do a stream yesterday, quite early, to make up for having to postpone Thursday. on Thursday, because I was just exhausted from things. And then, Bye. Jeff, yeah, we've got uh, Princes this Friday, don't we? I believe so, yes. I haven't checked with people yet, but that's the idea, at least. So keep your eyes out for that because we're moving our way through the How Temple of the Howling Hatred. Are we still in there? We're still in there. You're still in there. Well you're gonna decide whether you want to be in there or leave there. We may leave. still be in there. We may leave it. Who knows? Tune in to find out. We won't know until we get there. Uh so that's that's what we have coming up in the next week or so. For now, I'm gonna say once again thank you for watching. Uh, we really appreciate oh, wow. it, and we are going to throw a raid uh, at... I'm going to go with, uh, unless anybody's got any objections, I'm going to say we're going to throw a raid at Carpe Diem Online. Ooh. Okay. Uh, who is doing yeah. some D&D. &D. Nice. So, go give them some love. We'll see you guys again real soon for now. So long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.